Hello and welcome back. I'm kind of excited today because finally we are going to get our hands dirty working with our first macro. But before we do that, let's understand what exactly is a macro. How do you record a macro? In fact, if you remember, in the last video, we got acquainted with three different kind of cell references. The first one was relative, second was absolute and the third was mixed. In this video, we will see how these cell references affect or rather they behave when we record a macro. We will also see how can we edit a macro. How do we run a macro using a shape or a form button or an image which you downloaded from the internet. We will also see how can we save a macro in case we need to use it again and again. So, in short, macros are programs used to automate frequently used processes or tasks in Excel. Macros can run with a single click or a keyboard combination. So there are two ways to create a macro. You can either record a macro or you can code it. In this video, we will just restrict to recording, editing and running a macro. In future videos, I will explain how to write a macro because a lot of things go into it when you're writing a macro from scratch. But for this video, let's start recording a macro. Before we start, consider that you have to do a particular task daily, weekly or monthly in your office. And it takes a lot of your time to clean the data, convert it to a table and then finally create a chart which you can use, uh, say, in a PowerPoint presentation. Let's consider this sales data that I have created as a demo. This data is for the car company which has say 5 sales executives. And you have to show this chart in your weekly PowerPoint presentation to your boss. This is the raw data for January and this is the chart that you want as an end result. Which you will copy and paste into PowerPoint presentation. Depending upon your real life scenarios, a similar kind of data will take approximately from 5 minutes to 15 minutes or possibly even more for you to clean the data, convert it to a table, create a chart and paste it say into a PowerPoint presentation. You may be doing a lot of customizations in your chart, but for this demonstration purpose, I'm using a very small data set very few customizations in the chart. Now, what would you say if you could create this chart at a click of a button? That would be awesome, right? Before we start recording, let me share few important things. The macro records almost everything that you do while recording. For example, if you select a range or scroll a window, the macro will capture that. If you select a chart, then it will record that too with the name of the chart. For a beginner, this is a very important piece of information because you are still learning how to record and write a macro and you will not be able to edit or change the code if you are not aware how to do that. So let's try and avoid clicking anything that we do not want getting recorded. I will explain more about this when we are editing the macro. So let's begin. You can start recording a macro by going to the developer tab and clicking on the record macro button. So we go to the developer tab and this is the record macro button. If you do not see the developer tab and if you're unsure how to make the developer tab visible, then see the video how to enable the developer tab in Excel 365 for Windows, where I share three different ways to enable the tab. Now I will show you a second way to record a macro. Do you see this button right at the bottom which says no macros are currently recording. Click to begin recording a new macro. So when you click on this you can start recording. This is another way to record a macro. Coming back to the developer tab, right below the record macro button do you see use relative references? When a macro is being recorded in Excel, by default it uses absolute cell references. 
If you remember in our last video, we spoke about relative, absolute and mixed cell references. Sometimes this is not the right recording mode for a situation. You may want to use relative references. You can do that by clicking on this. When you click on that, it becomes highlighted or rather pressed as you can see here. I'm going to uncheck it. If you would like to understand what these cell references are and how do they behave, then I would recommend seeing my video relative, absolute and mixed cell references. Like I mentioned that Excel uses absolute cell references. So if you select a particular range or enter something in a particular range, then Excel will remember the cell address. And when you run the macro next time, Excel will use the same cells to perform the same actions. I will cover an example later at the end of this video where I will demonstrate on how to use relative references. When you're manually creating a chart, probably these are the few steps that you take. The first is you select the range, then you create a table. Let's look at this image. This is what I have as a reference. This is the end result that we are trying to achieve. So, like I said, you select the range, you convert it to a table. From this table, you create a pivot table. And from the pivot table, you create this chart and you customize it. And this is finally how my chart would look like. So let's start recording a macro. So I click on record macro button and I'm presented with a record macro dialog box. Here I will give a meaningful name for the macro. Let's call it sales chart. You can also assign a shortcut key to it. Ensure that the shortcut key is not used for anything else in the Excel application. Do not use, for example, Ctrl S. Ctrl S is for saving the workbook. And if you try to use Ctrl S, see what happens. It will change to Ctrl Shift S, which is okay. The section below that is Store Macro In. If you click on the drop down, you will notice that you are presented with personal macro workbook, new workbook and this workbook. You will also see other workbooks in case there are more workbooks open. You can store the code in a personal macro workbook, but since I've not explained what personal macro workbook is, ignore that for a moment. I will cover about personal macro workbook in another video. But for this video, we will store the code in this workbook. This is the description section. Give a short description if you want. I will say my macro to help me get sales chart data for PowerPoint. I always leave a description or comments on my macro so that in the future, let's say after six months, if I look at my macro, I should know what the macro does. I should not be thinking, hey, when did I write this macro? What was this macro for? So it's a good practice to add a description and comments to your code. When you're done, click on OK. Like I said earlier that Excel records your exact steps. So instead of selecting my range and making it fixed, I want the range to be dynamic so that in the future, when more data is added, I would like the macro to include that data. Right now, the data is for January. What if I add Feb's and March data to it? I would like that data to reflect in the chart and that too with a click of a button. So for that, select the first row of the range and then press the shift button on your keyboard and tap on the end button of your keyboard once and then press the down arrow key. What I'm telling Excel here is select the first row and select all the data till the last row. So I'm not selecting a particular range. This way, 
my range is not fixed. It becomes more like a dynamic range. Now let's convert this range into a table. To do that, click on the insert tab and click on the table button. When you place your mouse cursor over this button, you will notice that Excel notifies that the shortcut key for this button is Ctrl T. This means that the next time you do not need to click on the insert tab and click on the table button, but you can directly press the Ctrl T shortcut from your keyboard and insert a table. For the time being, I'm going to click on this button. I'm presented with the create table dialog box and you will notice that Excel has pre-filled it with the relevant range. So you do not need to change anything there. Leave it as it is. It has also discovered that your table has headers, which is awesome. So do not uncheck it and click on OK. And now we have a table which approximately looks like the table in the image. Let's change the format of the table so that it looks exactly like what is shown in the image. For that, click on this button and scroll down to the dark section. The second option, which is dark blue table style dark 2 is what we want. So we'll click on that. The next step is to convert this table into a pivot table. Before we do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete columns G to Q. I will explain why am I deleting these columns in a short while. Now we will create the pivot table. To do that, click anywhere in the range and in the insert tab, click on pivot table. We are presented with the pivot table from table or range dialog box. Excel automatically gives it a table name. You do not need to change that. Leave it as it is. Right below the table range, you have an option. Choose where you want the pivot table to be placed. I want the table to be placed in the existing worksheet in range G1. So I select that and I click on OK. You will notice that Excel has inserted a pivot table, pivot table 1 in cell G1. This is the reason why we earlier deleted columns from G to Q. If there is already a pivot table with a particular name and you try to create a pivot table with the same name, Excel will give you an error. We do not want our macro to create the same name and give us an error. So what we are doing is we are deleting the columns in the macro itself and then recreating the pivot table with the same name. This way, we will not get an error when the macro creates the pivot table. Now let's customize the pivot table. I will drag the employee name into the rows field. I will drag the month into the columns field and actual sales in the values. So now our pivot table looks like what we have in the image. The next thing I want to do is insert a chart. Click on the insert tab and then click on insert column or bar chart and select the 2D clustered column chart. You will notice that Excel inserts a chart with the small round things that you see around the chart. This means that the chart is selected. It is active at the moment. So do not click anywhere outside which will deselect the chart. The reason why we do not want to do that is because when you select the chart again, Excel will refer to the chart with its name, which we do not want. So do not do that. I want the macro to work with the chart it created with this data. Whatever name it gives, I want to work with that. One thing before we go ahead, whenever Excel creates a chart, sometimes it adds the title and sometimes it doesn't. So what we will do here is we will click on this plus icon and deselect the chart title and select it again. This way, when we are changing the chart title later on and we are using this code for some other data set, it will work perfectly. Because if running this code on a data set, if the macro does not add a chart title, the code will fail. 
Now let's format the chart so it looks like what we have in the image. To do that, click on the design tab, click on the drop down and select style 9. Now let's get the rounded corners. To do that, right click on the chart and click on format chart area. Under the border section, click on rounded corners. I'm doing these customizations just for the demonstration purpose. You can change whatever you want. Remove whatever components you do not like. The next thing I'm going to do is delete the grid lines and I'm going to give it a title which is car sales. So I select these grid lines and I delete it. And then I change the title to car sales. Now let's format the axis. We'll make it currency. To do that, click on the axis and then right click and click on format axis. Scroll down to the number section and change the format to currency. Since I'm in India, it's going to show a rupee symbol. I'm going to change it to USD. Now we have added the currency. The next step I will do is to add data labels. Right click on the axis and click on add data labels. By default, the data labels are shown at the outside end. So I'm not going to change that. However, I want my data labels to show as currency. So I will select it right click on it and click on format data labels if you scroll down you'll see that the label position is at outside end as i had mentioned below that we have number we are going to select currency from here change the symbol from rupee to english us and you will notice that the data labels now have currency symbols this chart now looks like the chart in the image so we are done. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop the recording. Before we go ahead, let's quickly save our workbook. Trust me, we really do not want to go ahead and redo the entire stuff. So I'll click on file, save as, and then I'll save the file on desktop for demonstration purpose. So I go here, I'll change the file format to Excel macro enabled workbook because we have to save the code that we have written. The reason why we are changing the file type is because the XLSX extension will not save your code. Give whatever name you want. For the demonstration purpose, I'm going to call it my macro.xlsm and I click on save. You notice that after saving the file, if the data labels were already active, selected then it reset the number formatting this is normal don't worry about it we as it is do not need this chart and the macro will recreate this chart so if you want you can actually delete this chart and the macro will recreate it to access the code click on visual basic in the developer tab under modules you will find your module which has the recorded code if this is the first time you're recording, then the code will be in module one. If you are doing it multiple times, then it is possible that there will be other modules. Simply search the module for your relevant code. This is the name of the macro and this is the description that we gave for this macro. Below that, we have the shortcut key that we assigned to it, which is control shift S. Now let's quickly go through the code and check whether Excel gave any absolute names or references in the code because we wouldn't want that. Here we see that macro is now selecting A1 to E1 which is this. This is absolutely fine. We want that to happen. In the next line we see that the code is selecting the data below that range. This is also okay. The next line is application.cutcopy mode is equal to false. Ignore this for the moment. In one of the future videos when I am discussing how to clean up your macro code, we will address it then. 
okay the next line i see that excel is creating the table but here excel is hard coding the range we don't want this so we have something which is called selection i'm going to use that don't go too much into the term selection we will understand this when we are creating a macro from scratch right now i'm just using it so that we do not use any hard code range this selection refers to this entire selection that excel selected i see excel is selecting the table which is fine it is setting the format of the table to table style doc2 which is fine here it is selecting the column g to q and deleting it that's what we want here it is creating the pivot cache okay now the table destination is hard coded to sheet 1 r1 c1 which is row 1 column 7 which is nothing but cell g1 we don't want that we don't want the sheet name to be there but yes we want the pivot table to be created in cell g1 so i'm going to delete sheet one here i see the code is selecting sheet one so i'm going to delete that it should select cells one comma seven which is fine here the code is creating the pivot table and then setting the employees and month and actual sales in the relevant pivot table settings this is fine here the code is adding a chart and in the next line, it is trying to set a hard coded range. We don't want this. So we'll delete sheet one. We have G1 to I8. We don't want I8, which is this last cell I8. We want it to pick the last row. So what we'll do is I'm going to delete this part and I'm going to insert something which is called current region. I'm going to explain current region in the video when I'm interacting with the Excel worksheet and we, when we are actually creating a macro from scratch. In short, current region selects all the adjacent cells to the cell that we are referring to. So we have G1 current region. So all the cells next to G1 comes under current region. So this is taken care of. Let's go down. This is fine. Here we are setting the chart title, which is also okay. If we go down here, we are formatting the axis and the data labels. Everything is fine. Now let's test this macro. So we'll go back to the worksheet. I'm going to delete these columns and I can either go to table design and convert this to range or what I will do is I will copy this and I will paste this as values and then delete these rows. So we have our original data before we started recording the macro. Now let's run this macro on this data. So I will go to developer, click on macros and there we have sales chart. Click on run and we see that our chart is instantly created. Now let's test this macro on a second data set which I have in sheet 2. Here you can see that the data is from Jan till March. Before we run the macro on this data, remember in the code we have something which is called table 1. And if we go back here you will notice that there's already a table one in sheet one. So if you run the code directly on the sheet two data range, you will get an error. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this range and I will convert this to a range. So that, so that this is no longer a table. Now I'll go to sheet two and I'm going to now run the macro on this data. Since we do not have any hard coded worksheet names in our code, the pivot table and the chart will be created in this worksheet, which is the active sheet. So let's run the macro. Go to developer tab, click on macros and click on sales chart. And the code created our chart. One thing I would like to bring to your notice is 
When working with charts, and I'm going to cover this in one of the videos where we are automating charts. When you add a new series to the chart, Excel will not format those series. So for one, you got the dollar sign. For the other, you do not see any data labels. You will have to do that yourself. So I'm going to right click on this and format the data label. First, I'll add the data label then right click on the data label click on format data labels go to number currency change this to dollar us similarly you'll have to do it for this as well i'm going to just make this chart bigger so that you can see it clearly repeat the same step for this series collection as well right click on it click on add data labels select the data labels format data labels and change into currency with English US. So unfortunately, this is something which you will have to manually do it for the time being. Once you're done, do the rest of the adjustments to the chart and then simply copy the chart and paste it to your PowerPoint. So from approximately 15 minutes, we reduced the entire time of creating this chart to just one second or probably even less than one second. Isn't that awesome? Now I'm going to demonstrate how to run the same macro using shapes. So what I will do is I will reset this worksheet. I will delete everything. I will close this, delete this chart, delete this pivot table, and then I will copy this and paste special as values. Next, I will delete these columns. I will auto fit so everything looks exactly like it was before we ran the macro. Now let's insert a shape, let's say at A18. I will not insert the shape after column G because these columns will get deleted and I don't want my shape getting deleted. So I go to insert under illustrations, I click on shapes. And I will select this basic shape, which is a rectangle or you can if you like something else, then you can select that as well. So if I select, let's say a rectangle button, you can do that as well. Yeah, so I'll drag this here. Next, I will insert a text box and I will call it run my macro. Once this is done, I will right click on the shape and say assign macro and then I will click on sales chart and I will click on OK and we are done. Now if you hover your mouse over the shape, you will notice that the cursor changes to a hand icon. This means that this shape is clickable. Let's click on this and see what happens. And the macro ran and the chart was created. So now we can run the same macro using a shape. We do not need to go to developer tab, click on macros and select the macro. You can also run a macro using a form button. To do that, click on developer tab, click on insert and then you can select this button which is a form control and draw it here. And similarly, repeat the process. Click on sales chart and click on Okay. You can also give it a name if you want. So instead of button one, if you want to call it run my macro, you can do that as well. And when you click on this, it will run the code. We do not see the complete text because it's slightly longer. What we have to do is right click on the shape, not left click, and then simply resize it to show the complete text. Now, when you click on this button, it will create the chart. Similarly, if you have any specific image in mind, you can also download that from the web and insert it in this worksheet and then simply repeat the process. Right click on it, assign macro and then click on the relevant macro. I do this a lot. I download an image from the web, a beautiful looking 3D button and I use that to run my macro. So if you wish, you can also do that. 
If you remember when I was about to record a macro, I had mentioned that at the end of the video, I will share an example with you where we will use use relative reference option. I'm talking about this particular option. Okay, so let's quickly insert a worksheet and I will show you an example. So I click on this button and we have a new worksheet. I'm going to copy three names from the previous sheet. Let's say Melissa Fields, Clayton Burns and Eric Marshall. I'm going to copy this and I will paste this here. I will delete these names later on. I just copied it so that I can remember the names. Now, what I want is whichever cell I select, a table should be created at that location. Unlike in the previous worksheets, the range was relative, which was from A1 to E last row. Here we don't want that. We want wherever we select, the table should be created there. For the demonstration purpose, I will create a simple table with the three names and the months. And let's say a little bit of formatting like adding a border and few colors. So let's record our macro. Before we do that, click on use relative references and then click on record macro button. Let's give this a name create table and let's give it a shortcut key control shift T. We'll store the macro in this workbook description create a table at current selection. And see, okay. So let's start typing. I'll give it a column header name and then I will write the name of the employees Melissa Fields. Then we have Clayton Burns and Eric Marshall. Next, we want months, so Jan, Feb, and then I'll drag it till December. Once this is done, I will select the entire range, go to home, insert borders. Next, I want the headers to be black with a white font. This is done. Then I want the names to be in gray background. This is also done. I want to auto fit the names column and I want the month columns to be slightly smaller, say 70 pixels. Once this is done, stop the macro and we are done. So I'm going to delete everything now from the worksheet. Now let's test the macro. Let's uncheck use relative references. Let's say I want the table to be created in B4. So I select B4, I go to macros and I click on create table. See how it created this table here. Now let's say I want the table to be created in Q8. I again go to macros, create on create table and I click on it. And if you see the table is now created there. So here the range is not hard coded. Whichever cell I select, the table will be created there. Let's check the code that the macro recorded. To do that, go to developer tab and click on visual basic. Let's go to module one and we see the macro, the macro recorder recorded. This is the create table macro. This is the description that we typed and this is the shortcut key that we assigned. If you notice here, everything is starting with active cell. That means there is no hard coded range like we had in the first macro. Here we had range A1 to E1. It's not like that here. Everything is active cell. Now let's look at the first line of the code. It says active cell dot formula R1 C1 is equal to name. That means whichever cell that we are selecting there, we will type the name. 
then we will go one cell down and we will type the name Melissa Fields. Similarly, Clayton Burns, Eric Marshall, and then we are entering Jan, Feb, and rest of the months. So if you'll go through the entire code, you'll only see selection and active cell. There's nothing which is hard coded. So this is an example of how to create a macro using relative references. A quick recap. In this video, we understood what exactly is a macro. How do we record a macro? How do we edit a macro? What is the relevance of the three different kinds of cell references while recording a macro? We also saw how we can run the macro using a shape a form button or any image that you download from the internet. We also saw how do we save the macro in case we want to use it again and again. If you still have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below or email me on support at amexcel.com. Just a quick reminder, I will be posting two videos every week, one on Monday and one on Thursday. If you want to support this channel, specifically if you think I can help you in your quest to learn Visual Basic Programming, then go ahead, drop a like and subscribe to this channel by clicking on the bell icon. And I will see you on Monday when I talk about sub procedures and function procedures.